I'm Ron Jackson with Acoustic Guitar and today we're going to be talking about how to embellish melodies and make them your own by using some simple techniques. Now you, you just heard Mozart's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, my little embellishment about that. In the early 1780s, um, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart took a simple French song and uh, whose melody everybody knows is, you know, I, I just played it, it's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and used it to make these 12 variations, okay? And you'd be wondering um, what classical piano work has to do with some steel string or, or or a nylon string acoustic guitar playing. But the concept in Mozart's piece is relative, re is relevant to uh, no matter what style you play. So we're gonna take uh, basic melodies in this weekly workout and change the rhythms, the pitches, articulations like Mozart did and you can make up some hip variations. In this weekly workout, we'll start with a simple melody and use these techniques and take, take it to a bunch of different places. Do the same uh, with your own favorite melodies and you can breathe new life into your music. So let's get started. Here's week one. Example number one is a melody in the key of C major in its most basic form, comprised of only quarter notes and half notes. Work through the melody uh, several times until you get it under your ears and, and uh, under your fingers. Play it as written in first position. And if you like, try to play it in other positions as, and try it in finger style or with a pick, which I'm mostly doing today, or with hybrid picking, which is using your fingers and pick. So here's example number one. I'm gonna do a real slow at approximately 70. You can use your metronome. I'll put it on to get the tempo right now. So the tempo is going to be one, two, three, four. In example number two, once you know the melody inside out with example number one, it's, it's a variation actually of example number one. And it, we add eighth notes as well as passing tones, pitches connecting melody notes. And if you're playing examples uh, number two with a plectrum or a pick, you can use alternate picking using alternate strokes of your thumb and fi middle finger if you're using uh, finger stop picking, okay? Also, there's some new uh, things that you'll see on the music here. Things called articulations on the notes. Now, you'll see a dot, which means staccato, which means to cut the note short. And you'll see an accent, which means a note should be played with emphasis. So if you play a note short, which staccato will sound like this. And uh, the uh, accent is uh, play, play the note strong, like that, okay? Here's example number two, quarter note at 65. One, two, three, four.
In example number three, you'll see that it's a more complex version of example number two. Here you'll find a little syncopation. Rhythms in which stress is given more to the weak beats instead of the strong beats. In bar three, uh, there's a short line above the note which is called tenuto, meaning the note should be held for its full value or just a little longer if you can. In bar five, there's a, on uh, beat one, there's a sforzando. These are all Italian terms, just, just in case you want to know. A strong or s and sudden accent. If you're using your pick, follow the suggested pick strokes, which should help you play efficiently so you can make the melody sing. I suggest performing this piece at about 60 to 70 beats per minute. Example number three at a nice slow tempo of about 60. Example number three. One, two, three, four. So that was the end of week one. Week two. This week, we'll kick things up a notch with further variations of the melody. Example four introduces slurs, hammer-ons and pull-offs and slides to articulate the melody legato, which means smoothly connected and in a flowing manner. Both hammer-ons and pull-offs are represented by notation by curved lines spanning two or more notes. Slides include both curved and diagonal lines. Remember, to play the hammer-on, pick the first note like this, okay, and then sound the sub subsequent note by fretting a finger onto the note that you want to hit. So from a C to a D, I would, I would hit like this you flick your finger onto that fret. For a pull-off, you would hold the two notes, for example, from a D to a C, second string, third fret, down to the C like this. I would hit that note, I would make sure I hold that C down with your first finger and your third finger, where you play the D and you would hit that note first, and pull your finger and you flick it off. Like for people who aren't familiar with hammer-ons and pull-offs, I have some other uh, weekly workouts and basics lessons that you can look up in AcousticGuitar.com. So that's hammer on and pull off. Okay? Now when, for, to, for a slide, you pick a note without removing your fretting finger. So for example, if I play a, a first um, finger C on the second string, on the first fret, I want to play D. I keep that same finger and slide it up like that. After I hit the note, that's a slide. Same finger, okay? That's your target note, the D. So now, let's try example number four. Be sure to use the suggested fretting hand fingerings in order to, to best no negotiate the hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides. Once you polish off that, take a stab at number, example number five. So here's example number four. I suggest playing this a little bit faster because it's harder to play these slurs and slides at a slower tempo. So I say about 70, which sounds like about this. So here we go. Example number four. One, two, three, four.
Now example number five is a variation of example number three that includes even more complex slurs. Take things slowly in learning this figure and make sure that the slur notes sound smooth and equal in volume. Here's example number five. I suggest playing this about 50 and taking your time when all these hammer-ons and pull-offs and slurs occur where you could slow down a little bit which is called rubato and speed it up again. Here we go. Example number five. One, two, three, four. That was week number two. Week number three. Now let's get ready to embellish the melody with ornaments like grace notes, quick extra notes before the main melody notes, usually play with slurs. We're also gonna add trills, the rapid alternation between two notes using hammer-ons and pull-offs. Grace notes are represented by small notes, sometimes with slashes through their flags, okay? Trills are indicated with the text TR and the target note in brackets. So, in example number six, it, we add grace notes and trills to the same melody as example number two. Play the grace notes with slurs. For example, on beat one of bar one, pick the third fret of the D slightly before beat one. Then pull off to the first fret of C, of the C note, squarely on the beat. It would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, C is right on the beat. It's so fast, you can't even hardly hear the D. That's, that's the way it should sound. A grace note, should be smooth and subtle and not take away attention from the target note. It may take some time to master grace notes in terms of technique and timing, okay? But it's worth it to add sophistication to your playing and also to a melody. Especially a melody like example number seven, which is much more densely populated with rhythms and notes, okay? So let's try example number six nice and slow I, I say about 70 on your metronome so it's not too slow two three like that example number six about metronome marking 70 one two three four Here's example number seven. I would take it a little bit slower at about metronome marking 60. Here's example number seven, metronome marking about 60. One, two, three, four.
that was week number three. Week number four. This week, you're going to think like a cool jazz cat, like me. A skilled jazz cat can make the corniest melody sound cool and hip by playing it with a swing feel. Basically, in which a pair of eighth notes is played not evenly, but long and short, giving it a certain bounce. We call it swing. A jazzer might add chromatic passing notes like the first measure of example number eight where the C sharp connects the C and D notes, okay? And fancy rhythms like 60 note triplets articulated with hammer-ons and pull-offs. So let's take a look at example number eight. I would play this around the metronome marking about 70 which sounds like this. Or even slower. Let's bring it down to 60. Here's example number eight with a swing feel around 60, 65 beats per minute. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now, in example number nine, the melody is even more jazzed up. We add chromatic approach notes, notes outside of the key that anticipate notes within the key, and triplets galore. Timing is key here, so use a metronome and really work on making it groove and swing. Example number nine, metronome about 55. One, two, Three, four. Taking it to the next level. Once you've mastered your workout, try this more difficult variation on example number nine, which switches up the positions here and there and adds more complex rhythms. Heads up on the slurred 16 note triplets in bar two, as well as the slurred 32nd notes, four notes per eighth note in bar four. Take things slowly, and if needed, subdivide. Feel the music in eighth notes instead of quarter notes, so you nail those tricky note values. Here's a sidebar, nice and slow. One, two, three, four. That ends our weekly workout on embellishing melodies. Thank you very much. And I'm Ron Jackson with Acoustic Guitar Magazine. Have a great time practicing.